Hello AP Calculus BC students, Mr. Record here, and we are going to take a look at our topic 9.4 example four. We're going to start introducing you to this concept of the unit vector. It's actually a very easy idea, um, and we'll try to scaffold a little bit so that you kind of understand a little bit about why do we even need to study the unit vector in the first place. So without further ado, let's look at unit vectors. Now in the notes that I give to my students, we have this box that kind of defines what a unit vector is. And it's simply a vector that has the same direction as a given vector, it's just that its length is one, hence the name unit. And if we say that vector v is some non-zero vector, because obviously we don't want something that doesn't really have any kind of magnitude at all, if we have this non-zero vector, then the vector u which is defined as vector v over the magnitude of v is going to be the unit vector. So what's really cool about this is we're basically saying is that if you take a vector and you divide each of the components of the vector by the length of that vector, you have a vector that's got a length of one. It's pretty cool. So if in our example four, we see that we have a unit vector, uh, or we're going to find, I'm sorry, a unit vector for the vector v, which is seven, uh, negative three. And we want to show that it has a length of one. Okay, well, in order to pull that off, we're going to go ahead and call our unit vector u according to our little formula up here. And it just simply says, okay, well, let's take our vector v, which is 7, negative 3, there in component form, and we're going to divide that by, whoops, jumped a little bit, sorry. We're going to divide that by the magnitude of v, which is the square root of, let's slide this over so you guys can see it, the square root of the sum of the squares of the two components. So 7 squared, plus negative 3 squared. And if we work that denominator out a bit, we end up with the square root of 49 plus 9. And so we end up with 58. And I'm not going to worry so much about reducing that 58. It doesn't reduce anyway, any way that will help us. Now what I want to do is I want to rewrite this as a, a more vector form. And so basically I'm going to think of the scalar multiple 1 over the square root of 58 as being a, a multiplier inside of both components. And so I would have 7 over the square root of 58 comma negative 3 over the square root of 58. And this basically answers the first question. That is the unit vector for the given vector v. Now it does say to show that this indicated vector has a length of 1. <clears throat> In other words, that its magnitude is 1. So let's go ahead and demonstrate that by finding the magnitude of u. And we know that that is defined as the square root of the sum of the squares of the two components. So we'll take 7 over the square root of 58 and square him and add him to negative 3 over the square root of 58. And we'll square that quantity as well. And we'll make sure that all of this is under the square root, of course. And so in order to make this work for us, we would end up with 49 on top over 58, right? Whenever you square root a radical, the radical, the square root just lifts away. And the square of negative 3 is positive 9. And then our 58 comes into that denominator's position as well. And lo and behold, 49 plus 9 happens to be 58. And of course, 58 divided by 58 is 1. The square root of 1 is equal to 1. And so yes, we do indeed have a unit vector of length 1. I would like to draw this, however, it is a little tricky to, to try to sketch for you because the square root of 58 is such a, a, a decimal value. It's somewhere between um, 
what it would be between seven and eight somewhere so when I take seven and divide it by something just a little bit bigger than seven it does create a pretty small X component and that might not show up real well but I will leave it uh, for you to believe the fact that the unit vector does have a length of one now why do we want to even work with unit vectors well it does allow us to kind of um, I guess how, how, how we say modulate the vectors a little bit in other words work work them or look at them or view them in a way that's a little bit easier to to, to deal with and what's kind of uh, often the case in applications of vectors is that you'll have some kind of a, a force that you will end up multiplying by that unit vector anyway to stretch it out to be beyond one unit in length. And that's how we work with them in application situations. But by and large, computing the unit vector of a given vector is nothing more than what you've seen in this example. You just have to remember the formula vector divided by the magnitude and then there you go hopefully this helps we'll see you at the next video